Uh, just for the study purposes, we, we kept the surface temperature stable, so that didn't affect the results. The bearer temperatures are stable. Um, we set up all the screw runtime and back pressure according to what the manufacturer said. And the other important point is rather than throwing different compounds at the process with different contents of rubber or nucleating agent or filler or what have you, we tried to keep the same compound and simply get a different molecular chain length a different melt flow index, if you will, without having a different compound. So we, um, we processed the uh, crystalline materials wet and then reground it so we could have some chopped up chains, lower viscosity material, and then we uh, purchased the, um, the amorphous materials in two grades. And then we used the, the Arberg had a real fast response time, so that didn't really affect the results as far as the transfer would go world-class machine, very new, so it's, it's an electric and really stout. So the summary of the study is we compare the processes, thin wall, thick wall, semi-crystalline amorphous, different control strategies with a viscosity change and evaluate this response to each. We're going to compare the percent change in these different values to the percent change in viscosity to see how sensitive it is. The summary is, I'm pleased to say that decoupled 3 does well in a lot of conditions, but and Arberg's pressure regulation works okay if you know what you're doing. There's some quirks in it that you have to set up very carefully, and if you don't do it, it can start over-regulating, so you have to be a little bit careful with it. Um, simple decoupled 1 transfer when the cavity full does work for uh, a variety of different scenarios but all easy flowing thick wall low pressure loss parts um, the thin wall it, it doesn't work at all uh, decoupled two with a temperature sensor also works well with the low low pressure loss parts in fact almost anything works well with a low pressure loss part as it turns out if you're going to set up decoupled three in a thin wall part you have to move very fast pack the part quickly and get the job done before the part freezes so if you get a copy of the paper, this table is in it. It's kind of a wild looking table, but it, in order to summarize all these results was a little bit tricky. And so we, um, we uh, made a table here, and I'll tell you what the little boxes mean in a minute, but the top tables are thin wall parts and the thick wall parts. And there's our four different materials for rows. And then the columns are what are the cavity results that we measured? Fill and pack time, peak at the gate, peak at the end of cavity, and injection integral at the end of cavity. Those are values that we know correlate to different part characteristics. So we'll use those as our responses to see how they work. If you look at each of those little boxes, you'll see a box for each of those 16 conditions. 16, no, whatever it is. Four, four, yeah. Um, so for each box, what I found was the, the we took the four best process strategies and put them at, in the box. And the number here that you see, this little 0.25, is the amount of change in value. The peak pressure went up or down when I changed the material by a certain viscosity. So we'll just say, sometimes we didn't even get the part full, so it, so they became short. but. So for example, um, if I had a 10% viscosity change for this particular peak value multiplied by 0.25, the change in end to cavity peak would be 4%. Or back the other way, we found a 4% change in peak with a 10% change in viscosity. It's only sensitive to 0.25. Does that make sense to everybody? Because it's kind of key before we go on. I don't want to, we're trying to, get a relative indication of how a viscosity change affects these values inside the cavity. So now we get to the point where there's way too much in here to talk to about every specific point. So I will use what I think are the more interesting ones. Um, we'll start with nylon and the bottom t table here is thick wall nylon parts. Up here, these are buttons are all our um, different control strategies that we tried. So you're right now you're looking at 
decoupled three, end of cavity control. Here's our little tables down the side. We can see that decoupled three, end of cavity control controls the cycle integral real well. And the way to read that is, here's our filling. This is our transfer signal. I can't move that over, can I? Here's our transfer signal right here. The dotted line is the is the process that was made with low viscosity material. The solid line is the process that was made with high viscosity material. So you can see there's not a dramatic change in the cycle integral. There is a shift in time. The 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 um, the process packed out later when I use decoupled three. If I look at my little chart here for fill and pack time, I can see if I use a temperature sensor with a D2 process with time, you find out that you can make an exact perfect transfer when the flow front arrives at that sensor. Here's the signal to the machine to transfer. I change the viscosity and I get a very nice overlay of, of traces. So that particular process using a temperature sensor, filling to a partially full cavity and transferring the machine held that process intact very well. Um, the peaks, again, those, those held very well. Even the end of cavity peak did well. So it's a, it's a fairly easy process to control, to tell you the truth. Here's the end of cavity control with D3. Here's the end of cavity control with D2. Here's D1, which is essentially fill until you see pressure at the end of the cavity. Very, very good control. But remember that that part is 156 thousandths. That's four millimeters thick, and it's about that long. Not, not, a, t not a real hard part to control. Um, even just regular press transfer on position here is a fairly decent control, but not entirely. We get a spike here when we change vis viscosity. We get a spike in pressure with a change in viscosity right here. So let's go back and look at a second one, which is polycarbonate in a thin wall, 30,000 thick mold, about six inches long. This is a bear. Um, we were pushing injection pressures around 42,000 PSI to get this thing full and packed. Remember that the dotted line is the way the process performed with the low viscosity material. The solid line when we put in another material. I look at my little table over here and I say which process controls dimensions, which is generally cycle integral. End of cavity, decoupled three. End of cavity did a pretty good job of controlling cycle integral and peaks. Um, you look at using a temperature sensor to transfer and we pretty much lost it. We put the high viscosity material in there, transferred at the exact same position on temperature in the, where the flow front arrived at that sensor and the high viscosity material never made a part. In fact, it was way short. I just couldn't do it. So these are just a, some samplings. Does anybody else want to, we've got uh, some thin wall parts up here, thick down here, different materials. Anybody have some that, that are typical for what the way you mold? Nylon thin, that's up here. So here's our thin wall nylon. The uh, temperature transfer controlled time pretty well. So we can look at D2. You'll notice the fill times are pretty good. It didn't really do too bad with the nylon. I think with between heat of fusion and the way it conducts and everything else, you still have an open door down that thin part for a lot longer than you do with the polycarbonate.